Hey guys, Pastor Mike here. Uh, coming to you with a kind of a different message today. And it's a message of owning our grief in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, a lot of people have said that this pandemic is uh, actually threefold, that we have the disease, the coronavirus, uh, that's pandemic number one, and that's created pandemic number two, which is an economic uh, pandemic. Uh, and that's also led to the creation of a grief pandemic, that we are suffering losses, and oftentimes we don't know what to do with our losses. Um, I, I made a list of things that, uh, that I'm missing, uh, that I'm missing out on right now. At the, at the top of that list is, is being able to really see and interact with my family, my, my mom and dad, my, my son and his wife in Nashville, my two grandsons uh, over there, Preston and Peyton, um, an eight-year-old and about an eight-month-old. It's killing us not being able to actually spend time with them. Uh, I miss worship. I, I miss gathering in the worshiping community. I miss being able to go to work and interacting with the staff. Uh, I'm missing uh, my gym time, uh, something I do nearly every day, six days a week. I'm, I'm missing watching sports, being able to turn on the TV and, and you know watch the uh, March Madness basketball or the, the Cardinals baseball, or hopefully we would have been in Blues uh, hockey postseason these days. Uh, I also miss just getting together with, with friends and would, uh, would, would encourage you to think about the things that you are truly missing right now, the, the losses that you're experiencing. You know, when, when we experience loss, uh, we can do a couple things. The first thing we can tend to do is we can tend to blame God. Um, but intellectually, we know that God is really not responsible. God didn't bring this plague. God didn't send a plague. He's not done that since the, uh, the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt, right, in the 10 plagues. So uh, we tend to, you know, if we can't seem to pin the blame on anybody else, we tend to kind of blame, uh, blame God. But we, we know intellectually this isn't God's issue. Second thing we can tend to do is uh, just kind of avoid it. And, and one of the lessons we've learned in emotionally healthy spirituality is uh, the ways that we tend to avoid uh, dealing with grief and loss. We, uh, we deny it, uh, we minimize it, play it down, not that big a deal. We can, we can blame others, hey, this is, this is China's fault, or this is you know, this group's fault, or it's the president's fault, or we can blame ourselves, we can, we can rationalize, we can intellectualize, we can, we can even spiritualize by saying, well, you know, God's got this, and he's still on his throne, and, and he's working all things together, all truths, but they're also ways of just kind of avoiding this, and God's got a plan, and it's going to be okay, and, and God does have a plan, and it is going to be okay, but the truth of the matter is, God invites us to express our grief and our loss to Him. There's a book of the Bible, an entire book called Lamentations, written by the prophet Jeremiah, five chapters. And I'd really encourage you to go and read those five chapters. And if you've only got a little bit of time, skip to the fifth chapter. Read the fifth chapter and see how our situation today, the grief and loss that we're dealing with today, is much like the grief and loss of Jeremiah's day when uh, the Israelites were carried off to, to slavery in Babylon and uh, in that captivity they were missing everything that was familiar about their life. Uh, they were kind of quarantined in, in another nation and I think we can identify with that particular lament. So I would just encourage you, you know, make a list of the things that you're missing. Express uh, those losses to God. Share the, your heart and then remember how every lament uh, ends. Every lament always ends with praise. Remembering that we have a God that we can take our hurts to, our losses, that Jesus doesn't promise us an easy life, that he says that we will have trouble in this world, but we have a God who also identifies with us, who's come in the incarnation to live our life, to be tempted as we were tempted and never to sin, but also to suffer and know what it's like to grieve. Ours is a God who stood at the cross and watched his son suffer and die, a God who saw and experienced his son in the tomb. Our God knows what it's like to grieve 
to grieve and to experience loss. He wants us. He knows what we're experiencing anyway. He desires us to come and share our heart, be authentic, open, vulnerable with Him. Hand those over, those feelings, hand those over to God and allow Him to actually be at work in the midst of those feelings. And then we can end with praise. Hey God, you are in the midst of everything. You are at work for the good, for those who love you, who are called according to your purpose. As followers of Jesus Christ, that is great to know that our God is in the midst of this. He's not gonna deny it. He's not gonna rationalize it or spiritualize it. What we're going through stinks. Our God gets that. He wants to meet you where you are and walk with you through that valley knowing that his rod and his staff, his presence is there with you, preparing you that even in the presence of our enemies, God has set a table before us. Hey, I hope that encourages you. I hope that encourages you to be real, to be open, to be honest, to connect on a deeper level with God, to to take a step towards emotional and spiritual health. Have a great weekend. I'll look forward to seeing you in worship. God bless you guys.